Hi everyone, welcome to Fashion Speaker. Today our guest is a shining star in the domain of comedy. Let's welcome Deepak Mohan. Hi. Thanks, Thanks Kunchita. Yeah. Deepak, so tell me about your journey in two, three lines. Oh, in two, three lines. <laughs> Won't be enough. So three lines. <laughs> three lines. Interesting. <laughs> uh, I come from very conventional background in terms of I did my B.Tech, I did my MBA. I was working in corporate. Uh, Okay, that was first line. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, in between, I had done a startup. So, and that kind of gave me confidence that I can do something on my own. Hmm. And also, I think once you experience that thing of like, yeah, doing something on yeah. your own, then it's difficult for you to work somewhere <laughs> 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 because you want that yes. kick. Yeah. So I was looking at what I can do on my own, right? And I have always liked making people laugh and uh, trying to be funny. So when I saw stand-up comedy, I felt that uh, like it is something that I can do. Mm-hmm. And now it's been five years that I've been doing yeah, this. Yeah, five and years. That is very commendable. When it yeah. comes to stand-up comedy, it's a very small domain in Kochi, right? Yeah. yeah so how was it like in the earlier days when you mm. started in Kochi? How was the public's reaction, you know, when you used to do the stand-up comedy? And how does it change? Yeah, so now, I mean, people know Kenny Sebastian. And yes. So there's a fan following for stand-up comedy. But, like, if you look at movies also, which is, like, such a old industry, people yes. still go for stars. People don't... Indians. Yes, as opposed to say like if you look at like the stand-up comedy scene in London where people go for comedy. Yes. They don't go for stars. But here it's strictly for stars and celebrities. Oh, I want to see this guy. That's why they go or person. So uh, I think when we started, uh, so right now, like since people have are used to my content or our content, there's a following for me. It's a very small following for me, which keeps coming for shows and stuff like yeah. that. So, uh, that we have to build. Uh, stand-up comedy always had, like, a, I think people used to know stand-up comedy before. It is just that, uh, you know, to be good at stand-up comedy, we need stage time. So, there, there needs to be a lot of open mics and there needs to be a lot of... Uh, like spaces for us to perform yeah which were less so in terms of uh, craft and i still believe that uh, like our there's a lot of uh, like we have to improve our craft a lot there's a lot of work that is required on our craft and also on our art like yes. being authentic and you know communicating our side of things and stuff like that so initial days i think much more of my focus has been on my craft and de- growing my craft and developing my art and even today i think much of the focus is on this and i yes. think once i reach a point where you know i'm very authentic and i'm being able to deliver it like uh, you know very consistently yeah, uh, then i think audience will come and uh, like things will happen happen yeah so uh, initially when i was starting uh, when we all comics were starting mm. uh, probably one out of three shows would be bad or like yeah. our hit rate like jokes working that rate would be slightly lesser now it's much better okay. now like yeah. we are able to do it more consistently now i think so like people are more welcoming i think people have always been like they they know can like even yeah. three, four years back, Veerdas has come and sold out like uh, JT Pack and all that. Okay. So people know stand-up comedy. People have uh, respect. Uh, one is that they were not aware that there was a set of people who was doing it here. Yeah. Like Malayali is doing yeah. stand-up comedy in Malayalam. Yeah, in Malayalam. Well. Yeah. yeah, Malayalam. Uh, also, like in terms of journey for Malayalam stand-up comedy, mm, I started in English and then I like... Slowly, I do gradually, both. okay, get into yeah. Malayalam. Mm, yeah. But Mala- English has like, so we have a, like, when I started stand-up, I have seen a lot of English stand-up. Okay. And I still consume a lot of English stand-up. So, and there it's very, you know, there are people who have broken it down and said that, okay, this is the structure. While, you know, these structures don't help you in like kind of making a joke yeah. or creating a story. 
but you can kind of uh, analyze why this joke is not working okay like there is a joke in your head and there is something that you present on stage which a common stranger should also find funny so and also a joke is like if you tell too much context it won't work if you tell lo- too less also it won't work yeah so you have to walk that uh, yes there is a balance like, yeah there is yeah. a balance so in like so when you know when those structure nothing like the set up punch line okay are you uh, i mean joke is like basically a surprise so you know you build an assumption and you try to break it so that way you know in english you can still analyze that okay yeah. this is the setup is my setup complete is my punch line you know trying to break it or subvert whatever yeah, that yeah. Ex- th- that expectation that you build on in the audience mind but when it comes to malayalam it's still <laughs> uh, kind of like one thing my language is a little weak so i okay, take like you're working on it yeah i'm i'm yeah. working on it as in i try to be like i am i have been speaking this language yeah, for a very long time yeah for a time. long time but yeah. in english i can like throw out words and make it shorter yeah. which is very important for stand up yes. that you have to be very what you try to do is you try to make the set tight exactly so probably like if you had like three jokes which you delivered uh, in 4 minutes what you try to do is trying to deliver that three jokes in 2 minutes yeah. so you take out stuff which is needed which okay. i feel is much more easier in english than malayalam Uh, malayalam i think we are still figuring out Free. how that can be done <laughs> like right. how uh, you know how can i be using less words okay and communicating the joke and in uh, english like like there's a thing that okay there's a word which actually initiates that surprise okay like a punchline keyword so you try to keep that keyword to the end yeah so you kind of deliver it with some extra enunciation yeah. so that you know people also know that this is the time to laugh okay like that is the delivery style but in malayalam it's a little bit more difficult to difficult, do that yeah. yeah so you said that a stand up comedian need to be authentic authentic yeah, okay absolutely. so when you are very authentic yeah. people might criticize you for that yeah isn't it so what is that process you know when you get harshly criticized how do you actually balance it out like right now when i get like this kind of criticism on my reels i know that this is going viral that's okay. the first because now strangers have, yeah no yeah. it is a i think it's a like uh, when stand up so the best stand up i mean the best way to consume stand up is to see like a one hour show or at least see 10 minutes of someone performing yeah. because we try to again it's a set up punchline thing so we try yeah. to create some kind of assumptions we try to break it now what happens in today is that you cut 1 minute out of it or somebody cuts like 30 seconds out okay, of it and then yeah. put it on instagram which would be not something that you meant yeah because this is mockery right exactly, i mean you're exactly. making fun of something yeah yeah when i make fun of something i make sure that i f- make fun of myself okay. like i don't make fun from a point of oh i am better than you are self i make fun of everything eh? like typically we are like court jesters yeah. kind of people but then you know uh, 30 seconds is cut yes so many times harsh criticism comes from people not understanding you yeah uh, it is part like you know uh, and uh, joke is very subjective exactly yeah, that like and people's opinion change also yeah, they people, might think good about you today yeah, yeah. tomorrow they might just yeah. change their opinion yeah. true so harsh criticism might in fact like that's what i was telling that now when i see a somebody ha- criticizing harshly i know that my reel has reached the crowd which yeah. doesn't know me yeah which is good which is basically yeah, exactly. that i am going viral now. that is so, what everybody wants yeah, right now yeah. true true so and it works I, really I good for stand up comedy yeah i accept it with like complete gracefully uh, yeah, yeah gracefully <laughs> i accept it it's it's i sometimes we get very creative comments I mean what we do is mocking and making fun of yes, things. Yes. Yes. Similarly like I should be a sport about exactly, it. Like, exactly. Like I cannot be offended so <laughs> true <laughs> people say something about yeah. me. Yeah. And I think that it's a much better world if we all make fun of each other. Exactly. Yeah. And tell me that what was the turning point in your career where you felt like this is something a piece of art that you hmm. did. Okay. You know. So what is that turning point in your career? Which is the work that made you realize like this is something really good okay uh, 
okay i think i can like answer in phases okay, okay all right so i think the first phase i like i start i come from a point where as i said i wanted to do something on my own i was clear about that i wanted to do something creative uh i had done when i did my mba i had done like copywriting courses okay where i was able to come up with very funny ideas okay. like i have done t-shirt slogans and all right i used to write for newsletters and stuff okay. which was very funny yeah. like so uh i had that thing that Skill i like you. writing yeah. funny so initially my idea was to do a socks brand a colorful okay. socks brand yeah. which was kind of like a build a humorous brand all right Again, like which is like a freaky b- yes, brand which yes. connects with the millennials and, and all you that. can do a lot of creative stuff with socks right yeah, because with, socks. with cute it's, images yeah with cute and then i i have seen stand up all like in college and all that yes. but then there was this reality show which i saw in which they kind of told what is the process that goes into creating a stand up set yes i saw that and i felt like this is this is same thing i want to create something funny and yeah. sell jokes you like to entertain people yeah i like to en- i like attention <laughs> <laughs> such I attention know. seeker yeah yeah, yeah yeah i like attention so uh, then okay then i so stand up came from you know me wanting to do something on my own and something creative and then uh, during lockdown time uh, i did like a one hour show online okay which is known as irony man which All is right. a show okay which is an english special and uh, basically so it was like it was like my th- into my third year of doing stand up right. okay so what i had done was that until that time i had done a lot of open mic so okay. i had a lot of jokes yeah right and then i kind of structured that joke to make it into a narrative All right. because when you are doing something for an hour if it's just joke 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 people will get bored so bored of you it, kind yeah. of need and manar is like a really long time, long yeah. time so yeah. some kind of hook should be there yes and i was able to do that and i was pretty impressed with myself scripting plays a very important scripting role scripting plays right? very important yeah. role yeah so yeah. how do you script it do you do okay. on your own or you take yeah. help Let me from just people complete this okay, okay yeah. so that was second thing yeah and third thing i think a few things went viral uh, and recently now i have got signed by an agency okay which means that somebody is backing on my yes. talent so yes those i think you know are points where i realized that yeah. i can go full in and do this like full time and do this all right yeah. so these are the faces yeah these are the signs i would say like okay that these are all turning points in my career, career. i would say yeah. yeah so yes about the scripting, scripting part yeah. how is it how is the process of it so you just talk initially you just do this like conversations with, yeah you yeah. just do conversations or sometimes you just see things and something funny strikes in you so you get these ideas from yeah. your daily experiences daily conversations sometimes you have this experience i think a good thing about being a stand up comic is that anything bad happens you know there's some content in that yeah right? <laughs> so <laughs> so that you know you have that idea that okay yeah. i have something funny right but then uh, what is funny in head doesn't translate to funny in stage true okay? very true and also since we know each other uh, or sometimes you might have that idea that i am funny yeah so my jokes will work but when i say it to a sec- sec- third person say another person i say he won't f- what, what sometimes it know. might not work yeah, yeah so then we go through this process of open mics all right that is what you would have seen yeah where we come <laughs> with these ideas okay and then we just like speak out what is that idea All and stuff right. like that so and kind of you get the drift yeah you get the drift okay if i take this angle you can end up in something funny all right and then you kind of keep on saying it and refining it and then uh, once i have an idea that okay this flow is funny and people understand the joke very well yeah then i kind of take it and sit with other comics and kind of script it out all right and then you do it enough time so that uh, it's like a process of uh, one is that you have to keep on escalating yes. like exaggerating so always whenever there's a laugh sometimes you have this feeling that there's something that i can say which will make it more funnier yeah which will make it funnier and also second thing is like taking out stuff which is not like really adding value to the okay. joke okay then it will be like a very tight thing which will take people by surprise so uh that thing is scripting scripting it's not like formal scripting scripting but still a preparation yeah still a yeah. preparation you play it in your head and you try to figure out what is the best way that yeah. i can present this thing 
All right. Yeah. So if I ask you something that how is the growth of a stand up comedian? You know, you perform yeah. and then is it that you want to get into direction in future or be an actor? What is the long term goals? I think uh long term goal is to like people should buy ticket to see you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like uh, we do specials. So stand up special is one and a half hour, two hour shows in which you have like a bunch of jokes which is basically once people know you really well they just want to uh you know it comes down to authenticity yes it's just you speaking like you're speaking to friends and that is the kind of vibe that you try to yeah recreate in an in an open mic where you're being very open and making fun of yourself because that's what you do with friends yes yeah. uh so so you have the special the show and you want people to buy tickets and come and watch you uh, do that art and then probably you know it some ott might be interested or you can yeah. release it on youtube which then again more people will consume consume and next year they'll again come for your special so yeah i think when i started with stand up everybody used to think that movie it's because i want to get into movies and yeah. stuff like that but i think now more people are uh, familiar with this concept of okay and we charge like very high yeah. ticket prices when other comics come like recently rahul subramaniam had come okay zakir khan had come so now people know that okay on itself stand up comedy is a very uh, financially viable career exactly. if you are willing to put in the work and i think so long, many you know. people are not aware of it uh I think people who want to do stand up comedy are aware of it yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, and uh, uh, you know someone who wants to be a stand up comedian I guess for them these conversations will help. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. how they have to process into yeah, it yeah. because the major part is family. Hmm. Yeah. Sometimes family might not support. Not support. So how they is your support. family? Like my parents still don't support. Okay. Like yeah. I think rather than one is that i was lucky enough that i could find a work and i had some startup yeah. before me which made me financially independent so yes. i didn't have to rely on them for like financial support <laughs> right so i think first thing is that like yeah. be financially independent. independent and i think that's what they also want that because i think after a point they also do understand that they don't know what is going on today okay. in today's world Uh, but my parents always want me to do like a safe job even yeah. today they ask me to do that so yeah uh like you do your shit yeah like <laughs> uh, convincing like just think why convincing your parents is so important to you yes. and go for therapy and <laughs> <laughs> you will understand that parents are just people who yeah. uh, misunderstand you yeah. so no, then I, you make peace with that yeah and i think so nowadays people are coming up with very new professions hmm. today and anything can be a profession, a profession. Yeah, exactly thing, yeah. exactly like, like i was thinking like whatever you do you can be like someone who does things with your eyebrows yes. and you have million followers yeah. you are with the nails many. manicure yeah. yeah this thing anything not like any weird talent you have yeah you just need a following exactly today exactly and today you have the kind of platforms which can push your stuff out yes. if that works so yeah. how much does instagram plays a very important role for a stand up mm-hmm. comedian I, as i said like in india it's all about creating a brand and creating a following continuously engaging with uh, your audience and stuff like that so all these platforms are extremely uh, important right uh, because i have had like things going viral you know and stuff like that and there have been times where i thought yeah now i am viral so <laughs> but then the thing uh, with how media is consumed these days is yes. that you Uh, tend to be forgotten also very fast the way you go up yeah. as fast as that you will come down come down yeah, yeah. so uh, it's very important to keep putting out content and uh, you know trying to uh, create something which can be a sort of breakthrough yeah and once that breakthrough happens it's also important that you stay and engage continuously okay until you know people come to your show and they are so convinced with you that Okay next year I come I have my I mean there are comics who now just sell tickets through mailing list. Yeah. Which is what ideally I would also like to do. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how is like the female attention you get? Uh, you know, because 
<laughs> not much <laughs> yeah not much i it's like it's it's better than like working so in it so do IT. you get those dms yeah you get uh, dms but i think uh, like i don't i like i don't engage much that kind of uh, um, like i mean uh, i was in a relationship for like yeah. uh, last one year and then recently yeah. i broke up and now i can like know the difference in okay. terms of <laughs> like uh, how approachable i have become yeah. <laughs> earlier you know i come from a btech mechanical engineering yeah. background and all that so yeah like female attention has definitely improved yeah, yeah. so i mean attention in general has improved yeah, yeah. females being a key part of you um, did a show mm. like in the venue that was booked for your yeah, reception yeah for my wedding reception yeah, yeah exactly so can you just give some highlights about that <laughs> event how was it so i was in a relationship mm. and uh, our families met it was a love marriage like okay. yeah it was something that uh, I think it was like a one one and a half years relationship. I okay. shouldn't have jumped to marriage, <laughs> probably. But then, you know, after uh, our families met, we had fixed a, a date for uh, marriage, okay, and reception and all that. But after that, we broke up. Okay. Okay. And the marriage was supposed to happen in Chingam, which all is like right. the marriage season, yeah. right? So we had to pay the full amount for the reception yeah. hall and stuff like that. And I think the thing is that. Uh, with like families the logic is that uh, i think females take care of marriage and males yeah, take care of reception yeah. i think so uh, i had paid for the reception hall yeah yeah i in terms of meaning my dad had paid for the reception <laughs> hall and it was non refundable so there was a reception hall uh, now that the marriage has been called off and we broke up uh, it was like on september 11th uh, coincidentally <laughs> <laughs> yeah so there was a marriage hall that was there and then in june july i got signed by a group known as wonder wall who does okay. indie gaga and they do large scale events so this was like a 500 600 seater hall and earlier we didn't have the kind of organizing power resources to pull something of of uh, this scale yeah a large right. scale large audience scale thing, yeah. yeah so but i So I was signed by Wonder Wall, and then I went and pitched to them that you know I have this hall, okay, and I would like to do a show which is on the lines of uh, like my marriage got called off, yeah. but that is not the end of the world, yeah, right. And I think it's it's what stand up comedy is also about, kind yeah. of like looking at life has got tragic tones, like how good or like how good, however good. it is projected outside yes. <laughs> inside everybody has there is their, emotional turmoil that yeah everyone on. has self doubts and everyone has like things that don't go according to plan whether it be in career or relationship but i feel laughter is like one of a strong coping mechanisms to that like if i can laugh about some very bad thing that has happened to me yeah now the bad thing has happened to me yeah. like i cannot go back and change exactly i i can learn that this thing shouldn't happen yeah. again but there's a lot of emotional wound also which comes from uh, like believing believing in something and it not happening that can hamper your confidence yes oh, now oh, i cannot pull off relationships or something like that yeah but then once you talk about it enough you understand that it may not be your mistake or your partner ex partner's mistake it may just be that you both are incompatible yeah or it was just a wrong decision which happened yes yeah. i mean things everybody goes through things, it yeah yeah a lot of things un- which are not under your control and uh, but when you can laugh at it it means that you are able to look at it for what it is like now you are able to look in a very impersonal way yeah which is very important to you know get perspectives on and these things and that was a very successful show yeah it was a sold yeah. out show that's what yeah. no people want to know how the marriage was <laughs> <laughs> people like tragedy there was people. a mystery suspense that yeah, they yeah, wanted yeah. to know yeah yeah it was a good and i also noticed one thing about the costume mm. you know like you were in the yeah marriage traditional yeah, 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 marriage yeah, dress so how much does costume plays a very important role when it comes yeah. to a large scale events generally i think uh, stand stand up is a performance art right yeah. it's a performance art where it's really about confidence 
and feeling safe like if i am nervous and i have things in my mind which is bothering me kind of that energy gets picked on by the crowd also like then they are nervous they are like oh i have to make him come because we have that thing right i mean yeah. now i have to make him comfortable now i have to laugh <laughs> yeah. so you are like waiting and laughter doesn't happen like that like laughter that, happens yeah. when you relax it's in the detailing i guess it is right uh no it is in the feeling it's okay. like feeling comfortable feeling and a lot of it is confidence like fake yeah. confidence yeah right uh he, i am cracking a joke for the 50th time okay now i n- exactly know where this is going to end yeah, yeah there's no surprise for me but still i have to deliver it in a way that i just like thought about it yeah, and sometimes you can so, make it innovative also yeah you have to improvise like based on response so uh, like costume helps in like making you feel confident All yeah. right. when you are well dressed i think people also see that okay this guy is prepared and calm yeah and you also have that feeling that yes like, and as as and we it's discussed also in the detailing that like everything is under control otherwise yeah. you are like okay is my pan loose now you don't want that at the back of your mind exactly. because then you are not able to perform be well you, yeah. you get conscious yeah, by yeah. The way, and it's yeah. not <coughs> like there's a lot of in the moment things that happen like you have to be with the crowd it's like a conversation so your attention needs to be on the crowd yes you are trying to get a specific response from the crowd yeah and that requires you to communicate with a large number of people true so you have to have a free head space so you have to be very comfortable you need to have that chill mind yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you have to have that chill mind yeah you cannot be focus too much on the next line exactly or uh, also that's why i think now that we are being managed by a professional team all this sound and all lights and all is like now well managed and coordinated and there are people professionals who do that mm-hmm. but before we had to do it yeah right yeah and we know for a fact that this can run out of battery so all that things will affect your performance yeah, a lot true, yeah true. so it's about feeling very uh, comfortable and uh, feeling confident also to a okay. point yeah <laughs>